Hello, and welcome to this brief overview of career exploration. I'm Rachel Killam, and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Career Exploration in the Office of Career Services. This resource is meant to help you get started on your exploration process before you schedule an appointment with a career coach. I've been working as a career counselor for over 12 years, and I've worked with thousands of students and alumni on the career exploration process. And today, we're going to talk about what career exploration is, what works for students like you, and next steps that you can take. First, we're going to talk about what exploration even means. When most people begin engaging in the career exploration process, usually they're doing two things. They're looking at who am I? Who am I as a person? And then what is out there? What's out there for me regarding majors, careers, graduate school, maybe a gap year? Most students want to be doing something that they like when they're done at UT. And so we are gonna talk about what students do who actually figure this out. So first of all, this who am I circle on the Venn diagram. What we're talking about here is engaging in a process where you research and explore your values, your interests, your personality type, the things that bring you meaning, the things that motivate you, relationships that influence you and experiences that have shaped who you are. That's, that's over there in the who am I circle. And then we have the what is out there circle. And that's really talking about your professional or academic goals while you're in, at UT or after UT. That can include things like what my major should be, what jobs are out there, what careers are out there, graduate school programs that might be a fit, and a gap year. Now where that heart is on the screen, that is where most people want to live, right? We want to live in a place where who we are intersects with and complements what's out there. Most people want to pursue a life after UT, whether that's job or grad school, that allows them to express who they are as a person. So that's what this career exploration process does. Helps you combine who you are with figuring out what's out there. So the people who do figure this out, like I said, I've worked with thousands of students and what we've seen over the years is this is what they are doing to figure this process out. Now, let me say this, none of this is linear. It doesn't necessarily mean you check everything off the box that's on the slide and then you'll have figured it out. But instead, students who engage in this kind of process are really paying attention to what their lives are telling them through the things they're involved with. So first of all, we have academics. So make sure you're paying attention to yourself through topics that interest you in your classes, through your class projects or labs. Pay attention to the classes that you enjoy or the classes that you loathe and make sure you're noticing professors or peers who are interesting to you because there might be something about them or what they're doing that can give you some insights into career ideas that perhaps you haven't thought of. So make sure you are paying attention to what your life is telling you through your academics. Then there's involvement. So if you move over to the, to the middle box that says involvement, people who figure out what they want to be doing by the time they're done at UT are also students who are getting involved in some kind of a club or a student organization. Maybe that's athletics or intramurals. Maybe they're involved in Greek life, or maybe it's student government or something else like that. Now, I'm not saying you need to be involved in every single one of these, but take the opportunity to get involved outside of your classes, because again, you are going to figure stuff out about yourself. You're going to figure out what your life is telling you about kind of what wakes you up and what turns you off. And you do that a lot through the activities outside of your classes and the people you meet through those activities. And then this last box, experiences. So again, people who are figuring this out are doing these things. They are doing informational interviews. We're gonna have a whole nother slide on informational interviews at the end of this presentation. But in short, informational interviews are a process where you talk to people who are in careers or majors that are interesting to you and you find out what their path was to get where they were. So it can help you get ideas of whether or not you might like that career or major option and how you might get there. You can gain experiences and figure out who you are um, and what's out there through volunteering. 
you can do that through internships and research or part-time jobs. Now, let me make a note here. Internships and research, if we go back up to that one, it is almost impossible to get a job when you are done at UT or any college or university without having some sort of significant experience. It's usually through an internship um, or it's through research. Sometimes through, it's through a part-time job. So internships help you get the experience you need to be even considered for employment when you're done at UT. And internships help you figure out what you like and don't like. You can explore and you can read and you can listen to different career ideas, but it's not until you really start testing those things out through experiences that you start to get a sense of what you really might like or not like. And then one more big box on this slide is the chance events section on the bottom. So a large part of our career exploration processes and figuring out what it is we want to do when we're done at UT has to do with this thing called chance events. And again, this is based in research. This isn't something we've just made up, but chance events play a huge role in students figuring it out what they want. So what we mean by chance events, if you read these two quotes at the bottom, one is luck is a matter of preparation meeting opportunity. What I like to say about that is luck really isn't this answer about what you should do with your life falling from the sky and landing in your lap. That doesn't happen. It is students who are engaging in all this processes that we just mentioned on the slide that get to know what their life is telling them about what they might like. So that's the preparation part. And the chance events are things that you can't predict, but that come your way through life that give you an idea of what you might want. So for instance, one example of this, there are a lot of examples of this, but say you're in a class and a guest lecturer comes to your class. And this guest lecturer is actually in a job. They don't work at UT. They work outside of UT. And they're coming to tell you about what they do. And they're in a job that you had never heard of but sounds really interesting to you. So you talk to them and you find out more about what it is that that job is and how they got into it. That's a chance event. You couldn't plan that. But because you've been paying attention to what it is that you might be interested in, you might see a conversation with that guest lecturer, perhaps an informational interview, as an opportunity to learn more about something that never would have come across your radar before. Another way I like to say this is if you do nothing, nothing will happen. If you do something, something will happen. And all the ideas on their screen are some things that people do that help them begin to figure it out and put the pieces together of what they want with their lives. One quick thing I want to touch on as we are talking about career and major exploration is a couple of myths uh, and doing some myth busting. So a lot of people think there are majors that are magic majors. If I do this major, then I'm guaranteed to get a job. Or this is a safe major because there's more jobs related to fill in the blank of whatever that major is. But here's the thing, there is not a major that makes you more hireable than any other major. And major doesn't always equal career. Now let me say something about this. Both of these is when we do surveys of employers, and I've seen this happen year after year after year, companies who hire college students after they graduate care more about what we call Spartan Ready competencies. They care more about those competencies than they do what your major is. Now, of course, it's ideal that our major would have something to do and contribute to our career goals. And it's not just the major that gets your foot in the door. It's everything we've already mentioned. It's involvement, it's internships, it's doing well in your classes. It's not the major that makes you hireable. It's the competencies you learn along the way. Make sure you Google Spartan Ready competencies after this presentation to learn more about what those are. The other myth is, is that a lot of people think when they start college, if you're looking at the second star on the screen where it says fiction, that 
you get to college, you know what you want to do, and it's a straight line to get to that career goal. And you might have people around you where it seems like that's their story. And for some people it is, but honestly, that is not the reality of career exploration. Career exploration is, is a much more complex process that involves a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns. And what we're talking about in this presentation is really some structure and some intentionality that you can put to that swirly process that you see up there on the screen. It is a, a lot more realistic that you are going to be testing, trying, experimenting through all the ways we mentioned previously to help you figure out where you're going. Something I like to say here too is it all comes together. It all, the, the picture will start to become clear the more and more you get involved and test and try and experience, experiment with things. As you think about your career exploration process, I wanted to give you some examples about how you can jump into this. So one place you can start is with an assessment. So at the top of the screen, I have some information about how to take the focus to assessment. This is an assessment that looks at your values, interests, personality, and skills. Let me pause right here and say a word about assessments. We actually use several assessments in the Office of Career Services. Please know that assessments aren't meant to tell you what you should do with your life. We have a lot of students that walk into our office and that say, hey, I want to take the test that tells me what my career should be. There aren't really assessments that actually do that. The assessments that we have take information about you and who you are and basically tell you and tell us career ideas that people similar to you typically enjoy. This is not the same as saying, here are the careers that you should, should do. So for instance, we recommend just starting, if you've never jumped into this process before, diving into a little bit of exploration on your own by taking the focus to assessment. On the left side of the screen, on the first little arrow, after you take this assessment, make sure you pay attention to what the assessment says about your values, interests, personality, and skills. We call them your VIPs. And pay attention to the ones that resonate with you and cross the ones off that don't. So that's one mistake we make with assessments is we give it all this authority to tell us who we are and really it's just giving us some ideas that might help us understand ourselves. So if you read the results, the values, interests, personality, and skills, and you find that a lot of it makes sense to you and seems true who you are, pay attention to those. If you see something on that assessment and in those assessment results that don't resonate with you and they're like, that doesn't sound like me, then just cross it off. You don't have to pay attention to it anymore. And the other thing with this assessment, and we'll get to this in a minute, is regardless of the majors and careers that the assessment might suggest, which Focus 2 will do, your values, interests, personality, and skills help you understand who you are. This is a really important part of the career exploration process. This is the part that's helping you understand who am I, and then how do I take that information about myself to help me in this decision-making process, to help me as I begin to learn more and more about what's out there, knowing who I am helps me know if those ideas for what out there will let me be me, or what's out there will let me be me. And we move over to that second arrow in the middle of the screen, the longer arrow pointing down. Say you take the focus too. You read through your, your values, interests, personality, and skills, and then you get to the part of the report that talks about majors and suggests majors for you based on the results of your assessment. Check those out. If you see some majors you'd never thought of or maybe you'd heard of before but don't know much about them, go and see if they're even interesting to you. There's a link on the screen that will show you more about majors at UT and allow you to really research what's out there to see if there's something interesting to you. So go check those out. And then if you keep following the arrow to the right is if you find several majors that are interesting to you and you're trying to figure out what to do with those, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can schedule an appointment with the academic exploration coach that works in the academic success center. There is where to schedule an appointment with that person in that email address. 
There's another resource you can use perhaps before you schedule an appointment with the academic exploration coach, and it's going to be on the next couple slides that I show you, but it's called What Can I Do With This Major? And we'll get to that in a minute. Second thing, going back to the middle, the down arrow, now go to the bottom of the screen where it says read about suggested careers. So also in the focus two, there's this whole part of the report that says people similar to you tend to enjoy these careers. Here's what to do with that list. Look at it, and if something looks ridiculous to you, cross it off. If something looks interesting or you're not sure about it, go read more about it to see if you even like it. So there is a link on the bottom of this page that shows you where you can go research more about careers. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that option on another slide as well. So that way you can get some career ideas. And then if you want to talk more about those ideas that you find, if you follow the arrow on the bottom to the right, you can schedule an appointment with a career exploration coach to discuss your career ideas. And in that appointment with a career exploration coach, you can also talk more about your values, interests, personality skills. You can talk more about your experiences and your classes and your involvement that's helping you get to know you and how you can use those things to continue learning more about career options that might be a fit. I mentioned this on the last screen is what can I do with this major? This is a great resource that you can use to figure out, well, what people, what do people do with this major? So if, if say you have three majors you're interested in and you're not sure like which one you should pick because you're not sure what kind of stuff people do with that major, go and check out this resource. It'll give you a lot of ideas. Another option for figuring some things out about yourself and continuing to explore is trying a life map activity. Some of you have done this through different groups or clubs or leadership trainings. This one is uh, specifically designed to help you pay attention to meaningful people, experiences, accomplishments, failures, anything really that you've done that's been engaging for you. This life map activity helps you break those things down and figure out what is it about those activities or about those people that were engaging or motivating to me. And again, that information really helps you know who you are and can begin to point you to, toward career ideas. And that's something you could talk with a career coach about as well. And finally, this one's fairly simple, but takes a little bit of, of work to really figure out what you want, is be a part of something. Whether it's a group on campus, it's an internship, a research opportunity, like we mentioned before, part-time jobs, Find some way to engage. If you're looking for ways to get involved outside your classes, start with this website down at the bottom of the page. Remember, this isn't necessarily linear. You can jump in and start with any of these. But what we do recommend is that you test and try a little bit of all of these because it's going to start putting a picture together of who you are and what might be interesting to you. One last thing that we touched on a little bit a couple slides back is as you are engaging in this process of exploration, you might be noticing people, majors, and careers that are standing out to you. And if you wanna take your research of these ideas a step further, start talking to people who are doing the things you're interested in doing. And you can engage those people in a pretty structured process that we call informational interviewing some people call them career exploration conversations, but it's a way for you to basically ask people, what's their career story? What was their career path? How did they get into what they were doing? And what suggestions or advice might they give to you as you're exploring career options? There's a lot more information on our website about informational interviewing. There's a link to that on the slide. And that is also something you could talk with a career coach about as well. And like we've mentioned, remember that at any phase in this process, you can schedule an appointment with a career coach, coach or you can come in for our drop-ins during the fall and spring semesters. Finally, when you have a moment, go back to this slide and watch this video. This is like a three minute, if I could, could show somebody what exploration looks like in three minutes, this video is the best thing that's out there, this YouTube video. 
something to note. Over and over in the video, they mentioned people called postdocs. Anytime you hear the word postdoc, just substitute the word postdoc with undergraduate student or college student, and it all means the same thing. If you want to know what a postdoc is, you can go Google it. But watch this video. It's a really good depiction of what the career exploration process looks like. And then you can continue to use these slides. Um, that we've provided to help you jump into this process at any point along the way. And finally, if you want to connect with us um, through social media, you can check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter feeds on everything that we're doing in our office. Career exploration can be a little bit scary. For some people, it can make them feel anxious. And there's an exciting, really cool self-discovery part of this as well. And Career Services is here to work with you on this process and to help you figure this out so that you can be moving forward to be doing what you want to be doing with your life after UT. Thanks so much.